Hello, welcome back to Wild Frost. Back again, baby. I remember what I played yesterday because I recorded that video a few hours ago. That's right. We're doing a double recording today. I'm finally getting ahead like I've always said I would. Some good heroes here. I like the 664 barrage, but I also think that 913 plus 4, basically 953 is super strong. I actually think this hero is like one of the best in the game in terms of hero archetypes. Although the barrage hero gives like a nice little uh, thing to play through. I think it's kind of boring to just stack the hero. So I don't mind playing this guy. Yeah, I, I do think these are really strong though. I think that they are an easy pick for one of the stronger archetypes. Because you just come in with so much health in a three turn timer that you can get away with a lot. Um, and yeah, that's about, that's all I have to say about that. Anything I want to tell you today? Not really. I I did check out a few games for the next fest, and I think I'm probably oh, yeah. I'm probably not gonna do too much uh, with the next fest. I my problem with game demos is that they feel really like awkward. I don't know how else to put it. It just feels like I'm actually gonna kill the winter worm while I can. To me, like, I played, like, three or four demos. I think that one of them was really good, the Tactical Breach Wizards demo I was very impressed with. But most of the demos I play, I just go, like, yeah, I have no idea what's going on. Because tutorialization seems like something that very fairly is saved for later into the idea. So you have to do a lot of legwork in understanding what the hell is going on in these games, is what I have found. And that's fine. I'm just going to end up not playing too many demos for the next fest as a result. Which isn't that big of a deal, you know? It's not like I have to. I just, I know a lot of people, a lot of content creators will do big, like, next fest run-throughs, basically, where they'll just sit down and play a bunch of next fest games, but... I don't know. I think it's just not for me. I've always been someone I like to hold off on early access as long as I can. Sometimes, well, one of these characters is playable. There's nothing I can do. There, there was, uh, my hands were tied on that one. That's no cake, good. And... Wow. I'm glad I didn't play the Barrage Hero. I'll play Snobble. I think you could also play Bonnie here, though. I actually think Bonnie's fine here. I would not play Blonky in this position. Uh, anyway, sometimes I do play early access games, like I played uh, 80s 1 in early access and streamed that, but that was it was kind of like a weird time. I think that was before Monster Train, so I was really just looking for something to play. But a side effect of me playing games in early access is I usually just burn out or move on from them before they full release. Like, I never, I didn't really finish 80s because I was finished with it. Like, I was done playing it by the time it had, finished, it had gotten all the content in it. I was like, well, I got nothing left to do with this game. So, time to move on, I suppose. Um, this is a tough one, for sure. Double Mimic Frostinger, my Junjun's on one. I think I take the flip, but I should redraw. Right, I have a snow cake for this too. A bomby. One, one, two. If I go tar blade on this frosting, I can triple kill this side, which is probably best. But yeah, I, I appreciate though that early access is kind of it, it still happens. Like people are still doing early access, of course, but it's less frequent, I think now than it was. I feel like now it's a lot more about just getting good demos out there, which is cool. Been uh, waiting. I, you know, the Bellatro demo was really good, actually, come to think of it. That was a demo that I thought was, like, extremely worth playing and worth the hype. So there are some good demos. It's just that there's a lot of demos to go through, you know? That's my two cents, anyway. I'm not gonna bother playing Bonnie. I think I will just Snowcake Frosting. You can kind of do whatever you want here. The main issue is that this team setup does not make a lot of money. So I'm gonna be very poor. 
going into the first shop. Unless the, I get lucky and there's like a cave on the way. I'm basically just going to have money for a crown and nothing else. This guy is hitting a 6, by the way. Not to alarm you. This is where my favorite clan, Shademancer, really gets to shine, though. This guy hits a 6, and I don't care because I just redraw into Junjun, and it's basically impossible for me to lose. It's just going to take a real long time to kill him. On the base side, I minimum damage 4, right? I'm always hitting at least a 4 into him because of this hero's passive, but still. Sheesh, man. It is going to take a while. No big deal, though. I think that this fight is probably the easiest of the fights here, all things considered. I'm not complaining. It's just really easy to kill off Mimics and Ice Lanterns. Even with a plus 8 HP onto Porky Fight. I mean, compare the health of this fight to, like, the Shroom fight, right? Hmm. I'll see what the card is before I make any calls. It could be Noom One Biscuit. I already have Snow Cake, but I think more Freeze is good. The problem with the Foxy line here is that Foxy, in this clan, there's no damage scaling. So I think I'll go Gnome Traveler here. I could also pull, and I hate to say it, but I could play Roybos here potentially if he shows up. He does not. Play Berry Sis. The problem with Roybos is that he plays poorly with, uh, with our hero, because our hero has one attack. Peppering is damage. I don't think we're in a position to be all that picky. I think we just take it because it's fine. I'm not happy to play Pepper Ring here, but I'm not like, I don't really have much of a choice, basically. Hmm. Crown for sure. I need to estimate if I'm going to die in the next fight. It's probably unlikely with triple freezes. Uh, so I don't think I need to buy Pink Berry Juice. It's very good to save. To me, I think you want to leave around 40 gold. And that should give you a reasonable guarantee that you won't be killed. And so you can just kill this, like, you can just win Bamboozle no matter how bad things are, basically, with this. Like, now, no matter what happens here, if the spawn is really bad, if there's a terrible charm, it doesn't matter. I just finish the fight ASAP and leave if I have to. Uh, and that's good, because then I can always, and I'll still have the money for the crown. Sorry, that's the implication here. Someone sent in my Discord a an interesting screenshot, I thought. Uh, it's a picture from the subreddit for this game. I'm gonna hit in three in the winter room. I'm not afraid of baby snowball. But in this picture, it's like, man, I can't beat my final boss. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. And in the screenshot, they have, like, they're, they're looking at their final boss and they have one crown in total across their whole run. And I think that it's very important if you want to try to win at Wild Frost to understand that the actual most important part of this game is clicking on as many crowns as you can. It's like 95% of the time, if you have a choice between something else and a crown, you buy the crown. Three to all is not that bad. It's a little bit of a shame. I need to not die to Winter Worm is the issue here. And I think I'm going to do my best to save Spike, and part of that is not letting him come down here. Yeah, Fairy Sis is just siphoning HP off into someone else. Ideally, it would go into Foxy there. But life isn't always ideal. I think the tar blade through all this backline sucks, but... I need to kill the Winter Worm eventually. This fight is significantly easier if you are in a position to kill the Winter Worm ever. Because that thing is like, that's a menace, for sure. Eventually it hits you. No matter how hard you try. What's my draw? It's Snowcake Pepper Ring. I'm kind of down to freeze the Gobbler here. Or I could freeze Boozle. I'm actually down to freeze Boozle here. I have a snow cake coming up, which I can put into the gobbler, and then I can kill him at my own pace. Yeah, second winter worm is always tough. They're just, there's so much HP. And they're hard to kill. 
But usually if you chump block them once, you win the fight, so that's the upside. I think I'm actually going to snow cake Boozle here. Or, no, I'm going to Storm Globe the Winter Worm. You see, this is the thing. If you're struggling with Wild Frost, I've been pretty bad about this lately, too. I've been kind of lazy. What you need to do when you're taking a look at a turn is you need to figure out what you're playing for the next four turns. Because from this position, we have perfect information of everything that happens for the next four turns. And we can have reasonable... Actually, we have perfect information for eight turns if you really want to go deep. I don't really want to go that deep. But we can go four turns here, right? Two turns from now... I get hit by both of these guys, and we can start to mitigate from there. I've been going like step by step, but I'll get a rough idea in my head of what I do, and then I'll just send it and realize, oh, I should have gone Storm Globe first, not Pepper Ring first, for example, because Pepper Ring first here is not a play. There's no reason to Pepper Ring on this turn. It is a non-choice, right? There's no value out of this. Uh, what I can do is I can Storm Globe, and it's like, they're, they're basically the same, but it's important because now... Uh, I can look from this position and actually do the math that I was putting off, which is 7 plus 3 is 10. And then what about 4 plus 7 is 11 plus 3, 3, 3. That's pretty good. So I do Pepper Ring now. But it, and in this position, it doesn't really matter. But like Snow Caking Boozle is the misplay, right? I'm under no immediate threat and no reason to Snow Cake Boozle right away. Unt especially not until Ban dies. And we can go, like, Tarblade, because, well, I have information. I have three Tarblades in two turns, which means there's no reason to Tarblade this guy. I can Snowcake Boozle and then do, like, Tarblade Winter Worm to save it for later. Because I know I'm drawing three Tarblades next turn, which means I can just kill the Gobbler with that. One Snowbow. And this fight from this position is, like, completely won, I would say. Hmm. Just a little off here, unfortunately. Mm, I guess it's fine. It's a little bit of a shame because I'm losing out on damage, but we were going to want to kill through this entire fight anyway. And there's no reason to sack Spike there. I would never trade away Spike in this position. Because I don't need to. You can try for some sort of big multi-kill. I think the best we can get is a double, which is okay. I don't mind a double. Yeah, the best- we can get an easy double here. Or no, we can take a triple. I just need to plus one Foxy here. And then Foxy kills Winterworm, Barry Sis kills- uh, Snowbow, and then Tarblade kills the other Winter Room. Yeah, not bad to get another little bit of money here. This fight, like, it's a world of difference between this fight and Infernoco if you have Snowcake. Being able to just actually remove Boozle from the fight is so strong. What does my man do when you put him in the deep freezer? It's crazy, because it's not that big of a deal into... For Noko, the freeze isn't all that good, but in this fight, freeze is absurd. It's a world of difference. Undeniably. Hero loses some HP, it's fine. Starting with 9 ends, it's gonna happen. Tiger Charm sucks. I am pretty sure we're taking Cursed Crown here. Um, I think that in... All observable universes, if you click on the Muncher Charm from this, you are just... Uh, um, I don't want to call you stupid, but I don't really know. Uh, un incorrect, perhaps? It, there's just no reason to take this over something else, right? These bells, these crowns... We're just going to click the crown. It's easy, and it's always crown here. Plus six. I do like plus six leader health. I could always try to do an infinite. That's on the table. I think the table has collapsed. I don't believe I'm going to do that. Mm, make a call here. I think it's... I'm going to go plus one draw. Plus one draw is super greedy. I should definitely go HP, but I want to hit big. God, I hate it here, man. At least I can go to the cave. 
but Wild Frost is like a 9.5 out of 10 for me. And if they would just stop fucking screwing me out of crowns, I would call this game a 10. But, alas. I have Bonnie, right? Hey, you guys want to do something real fucking stupid here? <laughs> hey, you want to you wanna make a terrible choice with me? Yeah, fuck it. I'll buy out the shop. Thanks, Charm Lady. I mean... Ooh, Cake Charm. Oh man, I always get Cake Charm on the wrong clan. I guess you could Cake Charm Pepper Ring isn't terrible. Beetle Charm Foxy is good. Now, am I so unhinged? What fight is this? It's Jab Jotes. <laughs> I'm I am fighting a war within myself right now. I'm I'm fighting back against the voices. No, no, I won't Pangu Charm Snow Cake Foxy. No. I think we're strong enough that we don't have to launch it right now, so we can just chill. I'm almost certainly going Cake Charm Berry Bell, but Cake Charm Peppering. It's not terrible. It's uh six spice, which is eight times three, and then you hit big. I think I might go peppering. Sure, I'll do it. It's good with Foxy. And then I'm gonna put the Cursed Crown on Snowcake. It's always gonna be good, and we can go... Hog Charm Foxy is fine. If he's 11 versus 9 versus 7, it's all about the same. It's good to have the extra HP. Maybe you don't want it because you don't want to give this guy a minus one charm slot like that, but I'm not 100% sure. We can go Junjun here. Two damage doesn't bother me, but we get to go Pepper Rain. Two damage to Foxy. You're locked up forever. I would like to go, yeah, Tarblade here, and then we'll kill this Jabjo, and we're pretty far ahead. You know what they say, once you're ahead, you're ahead. So I've always said that, I've always said it exactly like that. Once you're ahead, you're very far ahead. Always remember that. Gross. I could play Blizzard Bottle. I mean, Jabjo's gonna hit a four. Probably wanna bottle this pygmy. It's kinda scary. I think I'm gonna play Berry Sis first. That seems reasonable. Cause then you bottle the pygmy and berry sis is ticking down by one which she otherwise wouldn't have and now i'm just hitting one turn sooner which i guess is five dollars because what else am i gonna really do here i don't know dungeon dies to the gawk i probably am gonna play spike i'll take the two damage it's fine i don't really care that much about money in this fight my desire for money shifts based on where we are in the run. After we get out of the first boss and we get past that first major shop, I don't care that much about the money. Naturally, over the course of two fights, I will make enough money that I should be fine. I mean, hopefully I just draw yeah, a freeze good enough. Good enough. It's it's not so bad. We have the health to just kind of go long here. My damage output is not great, but nothing else matters too much. I have the HP to just kind of send it here. 
Gonna have to freeze Mutton Head though. He's hitting the six. I don't want to tank a six here. It's very hard to drill through this gawk. This guy has so much HP. 18 health at this stage of the fight, or at this stage of the run, is like, sheesh man, take it easy. Come on. I should always draw two tar blades at least. I could throw a spike at this though, which is pretty good. May as well get value out of him. Ooh, actually, incorrect. All I did here was kill Spike. Yeah, I didn't see that. Did you see this? I didn't see this. Oh well, my fault, Spike. It's actually kind of terrible to kill Spike off here, though. I might kill Barry, sis? Uh, this is like... This is a string of consequences of my actions here, and it, it stems from being afraid. Four turns ago, I was offered the ability to have my hero tank 6 with 8 HP and no demon eyes, and I was too too cowardly. I just wouldn't take it. And now look at me. I'm losing Spike, and that's going to be bad in the Bone Cats. Disgusting. What a fuck up. Can't believe I'd let that happen to him. It matters. It definitely matters. Uh... I like to say sometimes it doesn't matter, but I'll tell you, this one matters. Having Spike makes killing Pawpaws in the Bone Cats fight a lot easier. We are... I am just terrified of fighting Bone Cats right now. My damage output is fucking disgusting. Combat 5 is going to be our, uh, our influx point. If we hit something good in the next area, we will be chillin'. Uh, but I need to do something quick, because I do not do the damage I need to finish the run right now. Let's see what it is. It's gonna be treasure, of course. It's like a forced pick. Mega Mimic is damage. <laughs> it's real fucking sad, but it is damage. Zuma Nest is like, ugh. Frost Spell's okay. I, I played a run with Zuma Nest that was good. I had Chrono in it, and then you use Zuma Nest to get to your units quickly and play them. That was cool. I don't think I'm doing that here. Frostbell is like... I don't need defense. I need offense. I, I didn't even look at what the fight is. Hold on. What's the fight? It is the big feat. That's concerning. For sure, I'm a little afraid. So it's Mega Mimic or Frostbell. I think Mega Mimic is okay because it'll help me just drill right through. I don't get anything from the Traveler, so we go to the Charm here. Maybe it's good. It's a, it's a fucking good one, all right. Okay. I think we have to do it. I've painted myself into this corner. <laughs> I am... I am not down, but... It's all right. Unfortunately, my... Only other crown is a Cursed Crown. So if I bottom deck Bonnie, it's pretty bad, and I can't even Jimbo Charmer. Hmm. Well. What can you do? I've already committed myself, and I might not need to, but I've already committed myself, so let's run it. Gulp. <laughs> That's not very cool. Well, let's get it, buddy. Uh oh.
One of us just bottom decked Bonnie. So you gotta make a call here on what we're actually going to do about this. Because I can actually tank this not terribly if I go Jun Jun Mask. I only have to take a two. Which I think is okay. The actual problem here is that both of my freezes are in my hand right now. How do I kill this guy? You know what you do? You don't kill him. Six, seven. I'm plus one draw, so I'm guaranteed a Bonnie on the redraw. Um, okay. Then Barry Sis is going to eat this five for me. believe. We want to spread out damage taken so we get bigger Bonnie value, I suppose. And go Berry Bell. Oh, that's good at least. Maybe I just don't kill my berry sis for fun here. That would be good. In a in a good world here, the woolly drek will eat one of these two so that nothing bad happens to me. If he doesn't eat one of these two, it's it's a bad world otherwise. But I think times are tough regardless. I'm gonna use Mega Mimic to chump here. Is probably the play. Yeah, probably. Oh, that's good, that's good. Okay. Now, in two turns, Foxy will just solo. Not die to the Wolvie we'll Drek here. In two turns, Foxy will clear this whole top row. Which is pretty good. I could also have Foxy do 36 to this Wolvie we'll Drek. I could kill him. I could kill the Wolvie we'll Drek. It's not worth it, though. I think you don't want a tunnel vision on him. Although, I could just kill him. I could go... Oh, no, no, no. You know what? It's Sun... Oh, it's not Sunburst 2-2. Is it Sunburst 2-2? No, it's not Sunburst 2-2. Oh, man. Because <laughs> if you Sunburst 2-2, your hero hits into the Woolly Drek, you would take 7, which is fine. But he would then eat this Bigfoot, and he would go out of lethal range. So then it's 4 plus 2 is 6. You'll be fine, Foxy. And I guess I'll just hit the Bigfoot. Although, I am going to eat shit from this guy. Hmm. How about Freeze Redraw here? I think Freeze Redraw here. Six damage to Foxy, no big deal. He goes one, two, three. Redraw. And this will get me Storm Globe, is why we're pressing it. Ah. Uh. Ain't a wave bell, I think. So that I don't have to hit the woolly drek. That's what it seems like. Because I just can't stop myself from hitting him here. The blue goes up here? Unlucky. It's 
fine though. We actually defused the Lily Drac, no problem. Crazy. But he's dead on my screen. And then I just have to deal with this big foot and we're fine. That's a big just. I have to also deal with this big foot? Hmm. The issue is if I send Box Foxy to clear the top row. I do need Foxy to clear the top row. I see it now for what it is. Because if I tunnel vision this Wooly Drac, what happens to me? In three turns, I'm taking five barrage, five barrage, seven barrage. There is way too much damage in front of me if I tunnel. What if I pepper ring? You'll do... You'll kill Bigfoot. And then it's just a 5 and a 7. I'm playing Storm Globe next turn. 5 and 7. I mean, my hero does kill it. I could I could also send Mega Mimic up, and we could kill the Pawpaw as well. I just have to tank a seven. You're dead. I guess it's okay. Because Bonnie will heal Foxy up to eight. My hero's 13. Okay, so I'm gonna go Pepper Ring. Oh, you know what I should do in this line? I should have Barry Sis tank. She's getting recalled. Okay, so I go Pepper Ring now. Let's see if I overlooked anything here. Wasted on the health, but it's okay. We can go eat damage here. We're gonna storm globe the woolly drac. Really unfortunate that it happens, but every now and then you gotta pay the piper, and the piper is smack bag woolly drac. Two damage is what I didn't see. Um, I'm recalling. Very sis. Am I recalling Bonnie? Am I afraid I'm gonna die here? Seven to all. I'm not afraid I'm gonna die here, actually. I mean, you're taking nine, you're gonna be at four. And this is just a goblin, by the way. I know, I, I've been keeping count. It's just a goblin. I'm not scared. It just, it looks scary, because they're hitting like that, but uh, there's nothing to be afraid of. I go one berry bell. One bonnie. I guess technically other order a little better. Uh, but then we're gonna do one Sunburst 2 2 on Foxy. And then one Blizzard Bottle. And then I will redraw into Jun Jun Mask. And we will win the fight. And I was not scared. And I, at no point, was afraid of Smackback, Gra uh, Big. Uh, What's his name? Wooly Drek. I was never afraid. I'll just say it. I know you're all thinking it, so I'll just say it. It's a Pangu Charm diff. 
that's just a Pengu charm diff right there. That's the Pengu charm difference. I want to go for a big time charm. Greed charm is really good. Attack charm would be fine. But I already have damage scaling through Pengu charm. Really, all I need here is money to be able to buy Berry Basket. Because Berry Basket is a lot better than Bonnie. But I can also just go to the treasure and hunt for it, which I think is a little bit better. I can drop two tar blades. Berry Basket me. Tragic. Battle Mask is good. I think Mimic plays pretty well here, too, with Foxy. It's tough to give up my snow cake in the way that I have been, but I won't be doing it every fight, and I think in the fights where I don't, it's good to have Mimic. I'm sick of seeing Grunker, man. So fucking tired of this guy. And one time charm. One time. What's it gonna be? Flame Blade charm. Oh, that's terrible. What the hell? I guess it's good in the next fight, kind of, but not really. I think I'm cursed crowding Bonnie. It's okay to take the guarantee, I guess. Uh, yeah. Being minus one crown and two of three crowns cursed is a real shame, but... There's nothing you can do about it but complain. In this fight, I'm definitely putting my freeze on Krunker. I stand by Cursed Crown Bonnie, but definitely freezing Krunker. Not much of a question. I'm thinking Mega Mimic, Blizzard Bottle on Grinky. Fairy Sis here looks good. Foxy plus hero kill the Grink. Fairy Sis transfers this three damage into health for me. And then we're just gonna take big pepper ring value. That's all there is to it. It's just a pepper ring angle. And now we have damage to clear out the board one time. Eight plus eleven into Spuncher is fine. Don't mind that too much. Normal mimic. Sure. Just need to freeze Spike Wall. We want to make sure Bonnie isn't tanking because she doesn't heal. That's important to note. Bonnie is like, obviously three damage kills her, but we never want Bonnie to take damage if we can avoid it, because she does not heal from her own healing, unfortunately for her. Oh, I didn't see that. I wasted my Mega Mimic there. Oh well. It's okay, we're really far ahead. That's the power of the Pepper Ring on a full board like this. We just get to go up a punch. Oh, true. True. I didn't think about it like that. I killed the gobbler, right? Who's left? Who's in here? Uh, two Grinks, two Spunchers. It could be anything. I think it is not knowable what's in there. But what I do know is this Ice Forge almost softlocked me. Because, oh my god, we can't hurt it. It's okay, I go Blade Blade and then we Storm Globe Crunker. Hilarious. You press the button and see what's in the box? Yeah, what's in the box? It is a Grink. It's a good press because I just set the Grink down to half, although... I guess if you press it next turn, you would have just died. Oh well. What's done is done. I pressed. My hero takes three, we pay the price. 
I'm actually gonna flip Foxy up so we can kill- Oh my god, Kronker's on two. I forgot to look at him. <laughs> that would have been not good. Yeah. That would have been suboptimal. I do not want to eat the bombardment. I guess I phase change him though with this play, which is fine too. One Grink, one Spike Wall. Not a big deal for Krunker to have still on this side. It's as big of a deal as you want it to be, I suppose. I mean, it's like a moderate deal to me. I'm a little bit upset, but not extremely so. We use the Spike Wall against him. It's just going to take a while to finish this fight, I think. It's a meaningless freeze that Grink's already dead. Oh, and that two damage is also meaningless, because that guy was already dead, too. Mm. Whole lot of nothing to do on that turn, it turns out. Yeah, and now we kill Krunker by a thousand cuts. Strap in. Watch this guy die uh, 12 damage at a time. I guess you just throw blizzard bottles at him. I mean, what else is there to do? Complain? Talk about the weather? Local sports teams? Any of you guys big Mets fans? Been a bad few decades, I think. I only follow tangentially. There's like a channel for it in my Discord, so I keep up. Uh, the the crunk, Crunker brother. <laughs> he's, looking like a, he's looking like a Mets fan over there. I just keep up with the scores. I don't actually watch the games. Baseball too slow for me. Actually, not entirely true. It's just hard to find uh, sports online, I feel like, in a way that's free. And it's not worth the, the effort to me. Infinity Sunbell is pretty good. I've been having a lot of success with this in bad runs. Demonize Charm on Mimic is also pretty good. It's better than pretty good. It's like exceptional. It's very, very strong. This is kind of a call on what you want to do here. New Moon Sunbell, or yeah, New Moon Sunbell is pretty good. I do not mind it. If it hits Storm Globe or Blizzard Bottle or Jun Jun Mask or or Lumen Vase or Sunburst Tutu, all of those I'm very happy. So you get two chances at five out of uh, five, 10, 11, 12, five out of 12, two five out of 12s. It's like, uh, you know, pretty close to guaranteed that I hit at least one thing I really like here. I think the Infinity Bell is pretty out because I have Card Draw Plus One and Card Draw Plus One doesn't really like this. Redraw Bell Counter minus one is also really good, though. I, I think this is too good. I'm not going to gamble, because it goes like Tarblade, Tarblade there, and then I'm just depressed. Could go look for a charm. This charm goes to the Mimic. Absolutely. Um... Charm or treasure. I've been going for a lot of charms, trying to just high roll something for Foxy. Haven't been hitting, but I've been going to a lot of charms. Maybe this one will be good. Looks like a sun charm would be good. Durian charm. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Very funny. I already cursed crown Bonnie is the issue. Like I'm kind of locked in here. I think what we have to do is we have to calculate how important it is to hit the snow cake. I think it probably is just going to be a durian charm pivot here. Especially with the mimic. We can go 6 and then 12, 12. It's like 30 damage every three turns if I just lock in here. I think I'm just going to lock in. 
The Pengdu charm was good, though. Like, it did do what it needed to do, which was get me past a really hard fight. Like, that, I think putting Pengu Charm on was actually very important. It's easy to overlook that I was, like, extremely dead in that one fight. I think I put the Gunk Gobbler away. Now, I go to 12. I can go like peppering, hit here, here, 12, here. Yeah, that's good. Peppering just puts me super. Pe peppering into Sunburst 2 2 puts me really far ahead of this fight. I'm up a lot of turns by doing this. And I am just barely off on getting this guy, sadly. But, that's okay. I will just throw a gunk fruit away. I guess I actually do just get this guy anyway. I can call them. With the mimic, I think I can call them in here. Oh! Oh! <laughs> My bad. I didn't know it was like that. I did not realize this guy could roll double sun charm. Good to know for the future. He's gonna eat a tar blade. Six two. I mean, he dies. Six two six two. The shame is here is that I have to hit into the gobbling, but you know. At least I know now for the future. Hey, I actually don't think I've ever seen a Blaze Beetles here. Now that I think about it, I think I've always seen this as a Gunk Gobbler. That's weird, too. Hmm. This Blaze Beetles is kind of scary, but I guess maybe Barry Sis will just sustain through it. Yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah. You treat Barry Sis as like an HP siphon, and it's not so bad. I redraw now. Well, I do 30 into the boss if I want. I'm gonna waste damage here if I let Foxy go without uh, without calling in. 6, 2, 6. Actually, what you should do is you should go this way, right? 2, 2, 6, 2, 6, 2, 6. Yeah, this is much better. And then I just lock up the Gunk Gobbler and throw uh, Jun Jun's in front of Weevil and we'll be fine. For sure. Okay. No, not a bad fight. I was not really too worried about the Gunk Fruit fight. This is a fight that only is particularly bad if you can't get ahead of them. As soon as you're ahead and they don't get to crush you, it's fine. The problem of this fight is that it, when Gunk Gobblers get Sun Charms, they go very fast. They go every two turns, and if they get a little bit of attack, you start getting just pummeled into the ground. Horrifically. It is better for Barry Sis to go first, I believe. Not that it really matters, I'm pretty sure this guy is dead. Believe it's lethal. Indeed it is. Yeah, you see that guy back there? 18? Imagine you don't have an answer to him. You just get bopped. Ow, this round sucks. This, by the way, is the worst case. This this is not supposed to happen too often, but this is the absolute worst case. It's crown screwed at the start of the run, after the first major boss, and then crown screwed here with no shop. I think that this should just not be allowed. The fact that I'm going to go into the final boss having done everything right, managed my economy right, and being stuck on three crowns anyway is really disgusting. But more so than disgusting, I just think it's annoying because it cuts off playing cool cool combos. Like this setup where I was going to play this Foxy Pengu charm is completely dead in the water in this position since I'm minus two crowns. You cannot do it. Anyway. 
Charm Muncher is okay. I think I go Treasure plus Shade Sculpt Shade Sculptor here, and we grab another Snow Cake for the final part. And who knows? Maybe this is something good. I have my doubts. Hmm. Bite Box is okay, and Shade Wisp is also okay, but. I think this is probably going to end up being a pass. It's bite box or pass to me. I'll go bite box. It's fine. Let me grab ourselves a second snow cake. In the true ending final boss, this run will be decided based entirely on how fast we can kill the Lancer. That's pretty much it. Let's get it. I don't think there's a whole lot else to do here. It's just kill the Lancer and win. Don't kill the Lancer and lose. Mm, I need to put the big foot away. The Grinkle hit me a little bit. Good to be done. We want to avoid... Well, he's not going to hit me now, but we want to avoid um, redraw belling without with Sunbell of the Bell. Got there. Figured out how to speak. Let's go. It's good to avoid it for sure, and we want Frost Guardian's first hit to go before the enemy spawns in because of Rock Hog and or Mega Mimic here. We want to just tank this too. It's not even damage because of Bonnie. I can actually gain 2 HP into this. Look at that, plus 2. Gobbler. Oof. I... Don't know if I can kill that guy. Hmm. That's not good. There's a lot of things that aren't good here. I guess the gobbler play is to let him swing into the bite box and then pray that nothing horrific happens. Oh, something bad will happen to me, though. How about... The correct play here is this one. 4, 8, 12, 16. Into the grizzle. Bite box for the gobbler. And then... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. This is the play, for sure. Because here's, here's the tech. From this spot, you press the wave bell. Because here's why. In this position, the only thing that's going to kill me... Pardon me. The only thing that's going to kill me in this position is a hard enemy stuck behind the guardian. If I press the bell now, I can just defuse whatever spawns in. This was not bad, but if like a plum goes here, I'm so fucked. Or like a rock hog, something that I have trouble killing, I'm in a terrible position. So we just clear the space, waste the Mimic's attack, bite box to kill the Gobbler, blow clear the top row, and then just tank the Frost Guardian, because the Frost Guardian at 2 cannot kill me through Bonnie's healing. He is just out healed. Completely. So we go double Tarblade into the Ice Forge, and then Snowcake into Plum, and then we are just about done. Make sure Bonnie doesn't tank. Kill Ice Forge, and then we are pretty much neutral. And this is how you have to play the Frost Guardian if you have trouble fighting this guy. All you need to do is outlive him. You want to kill every other enemy on the board without ever touching him if possible. Whoops. <laughs> I forgot to move my mimic. My fault. Uh, that one's on me for sure. It's okay, I can get away with this, but... Uh, from this spot, we actually want to just chump him and try to leave the Mega Mimic alive, although it's kind of hard to do. The Pepper Ring it. I think it's fine to do so. And then we crush a little bit. 
We could even save the Jun Jun here. Why not? And then the Mega Mimic will instantly half health the Frost Guardian for us when he phase changes here, and he might block the Uba Bear spawn, which would also be good. Ah, too bad. Now, I don't have a great matchup into killing these guys. It's a little bit tough. We did block one Grink, which is fine. But... I might just have to drill through the Frost Guardian here. Which is not my favorite play, but... I mean, Uba Bear, Frost Guardian, Grink. How am I killing these, right? Six and eight. I just don't have the damage, I feel. Oh, I should play Mega Mimic to tank the Frost Guardian there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a mistake. It's okay, I didn't get punished for it, but still. Not great. Just make sure I move you up. We can just freeze these guys behind him and then chump block him for a while. Not a big issue. Because I only need to go, like, two more times, I think, after this. To win. So I just... And three cards means I can play Freeze, Freeze, plus one every cycle. Because I only have two other cards to play here, yeah. So we can just go... Frost Guardian. It's like Blizzard Bottle, Storm Globe. Sunburst Tutu or Blizzard Bottle Storm Globe Jun Jun Mask. Every cycle here is pretty good. And then, is it lethal? 12, 24, 36. It is lethal. This kills, I believe. Not too bad. Yeah. Exactly, lethal. Okay. The demonized enemy takes 42. Foxy goes to seven. Seven is bad, actually. That's really a shame. Start with a full charge bell. I could try. No, it's pretty tough. Because the demonize is the play here. If I charm and then go flame blade charm, you're going 12, 24, 36. You have to go three times with Foxy. I have to get to Lumen Vase in three in the first draw. I guess I could play Charge Bell for it though. And then I have to live nine turns. What is nine turns? Nine turns is one hit from the Lancer, two hits from the Bomber. Uh, the Junker and the Crusher are perma frozen through Snow Cake, so I don't care about those. It's nine turns is. Probably one hit from the Jailer. I don't know, actually. Well, this is the only one that I can do, right? There's no reason to play anything else. Time Bell is worthless, and this is an active detriment. Do I send Flame Blade Charm Foxy? That's the question. I bet you can get away with it. It just invalidates the Mimic. It turns Mimic into a chump blocker, but I guess that's fine. Because I have to, I have to live. Uh, I have to live three hit three rounds anyway to kill one. So I think it's fine. Just thinking, six, twelve, eighteen is the first hit, and then seventy-two. Okay, so I don't have to uh, lumen vase right away. Because 18 and 72 is 90. Okay. I see it. Ooh. 
Uh, so we have not. We have to go nine rounds here, and at the end of round nine, I win the game. That's what we're looking at right now. You're seven HP, no healing built into the deck, other than Barry Sis. This is the killer. I have to live this hit and this hit, and then I win the fight. This is guaranteed. This is a non-issue. It's these two that kill me. Because, you know, I'm going to go Snowcake onto... I'll do the Junker here. You're just out. You are out of the game now. If I play my hero up here, I'm dying to the five. Am I? Let's see. You're on seven. You go to... Five, which is two up to four, five, yeah, no. I'd have to Lumen Vase something else. Fairy Bell, something like that. Okay. Tough, but what can we do? I think Bonnie is just gonna go chump block. She can take seven. I need her to. I don't need her to. So I just berry bell, right? And now I always live the Lancer hit. Pretty sure. Okay, now what about this hand? No reason to play Mega Mimic, no reason to play Bite Box. The only thing about this is that it might have been better to play towards Demon Eyes with Pepper Ring. The problem with that idea is that uh, if you draw Peppering before Mimic, your run is, like, fucked. Maybe not necessarily, but it's not great, to say the least. Okay, so Bonnie's going to eat this five for us. I can Blizzard Bottle, or I can just Chump. Both are fine. I'd rather redraw Bell. Because I can play Barry Sis in this position. I'm really dumb. I can't believe I just threw that away like that. Wow, that was not a good call. Okay. That was real silly of me. I just threw away my Lumen Vase. <laughs> That's not good. Um, okay. Well, my bad. Definitely not ideal. Wow, and Foxy got none of the HP. So I think that the to counteract my foolishness, I will play Pepper Ring, which should make up some of the lost damage here. Love the belief. Thirty-six. Yeah. Okay. Pepper Ring equalizes it. I am now once again fine. But that would have been real silly if I lost for that. I gotta tell you. That would not have made a lot of sense. I'm down to save Spike here. You can take another five if I throw him a Berry Bell. By the way, just another good run to showcase why we never throw away Berry Bell. Every time I throw away Berry Bell as this clan, I just feel like a fucking idiot. Without fail. Obviously, I didn't need it because I won the, the one and three, but the fact that it wasn't a one and three is really good. And now, presumably from this spot, I should not be able to lose because I can just keep these two idiots frozen and chump the bomber forever. That is the assumption here. I have also a 20 HP hero because it traded with Barry Sis. Barry Sis's health is not out of the pool. I am still up a lot of HP. 
But actually, Barrysis gave me 12 from her 8 HP body, so I'm net positive on health from where we started. So, all good. I think the interesting part about this run is how it went through like four different phases. We went from uh, Foxy plus Tengu charm to Foxy plus Durian charm into a final position of Foxy Flame Blade charm. I overwrote three different game plans over the course of this run, which I think is kind of neat. Actually, is this lethal? By Lumen Vase? I think it is. I have lethal here. I may as well not miss it. May as well take it. Very cool. Very interesting run. Uh, lots of things to not like about this one, but I think that it is always pl it, you are always able to win a Wild Frost run. So step one of winning this game is not tilting. You can't let them get to you. I miss two crowns. I get a bunch of weird charms and bad orders. I curse Crown Bonnie. It doesn't matter. Find your game plan and just play through it anyway. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave me a like, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good one.